Hello and welcome to my ABS jet drive testing video. See here, it's made out of a piece of quarter inch thread rod with a nylock nut on it. Got two shaft collars wedged in either side of a piece of tubing pipe and uh, a little rubber grommet put on to be kind of a buffer spacer. It's not watertight, but works well and it's adjustable by the nylock on the other end so I JB welded the holes inside of my propeller blades right here is a lot of you will notice what the problem is right away the, the gap or difference in diameters of the prop and the housing and then the second problem is this taper is way too fast it's like an angle and not a taper but I figured I'd just be getting tons of flow through here, so I'd only be worried about how to direct it. Maybe if I had a lot more flow, or even an appropriate size prop, this would have worked. So, as you probably guessed, it's pretty much a fail. My little assistant throwing a wrench in things here. But he seems to dig it, so I let him hang around. air from the top of the ducting is released which wouldn't be in a normal operation here you can see it's moving quite a bit of water and pretty fast a lot of it's in the downward angle so I think my my angle of approach is important you can see with just the top of the 90 out of the water it already cavitates and shoots air bubbles out of the prop which is kind of interesting so I make note that it needs to be below the water line even at its highest point <coughs> so here I put the taper on to see what kind of action I'd get and it turns out it was awful and I uh, kind of figured out from this that with the gap in the the prop and pipe that I was getting water bounce off the taper and going backwards and actually coming out of the intake. If you look really close you can see dye actually come out of the front. It's pretty crazy and horribly inefficient. I tried from the front before I knew exactly what was going on and the water moved so much better that I instantly knew it was the taper down part that was causing the uh, the backflow. Of course, if the, the blade fit, it might be a little bit different. So you can see here, I test it one more time. See how fast it kind of moves a little ink through the water. Another thing I noted that I just looked over at the beginning was that the whole center of the propeller is completely dead. It's just a flat piece of metal that has no propulsion qualities. And uh, that was a big problem too, especially when the steering is, you know, dependent on the direction of the flow of the jet. See there in the center, we have like an inch of just dead, non-useful area. Then the sides making all the thrust and enough space around it for the thrust to just leave through the intake. It's just horrible. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Right. Thumbs up. Yeah. So here I just tested what's it like with just the prop and the amount of water moved is drastically different. I can tell just by feeling it that it's a few more pounds of thrust against my hand holding it. Um, here it's cavitating as it gets closer to the surface, but down low it's, well, that's not a good example. Down low it's not too bad and I don't think it'll be much of an issue. I have quite an extreme angle on here too, so it's something to think about. I'm not sure which angle creates the most thrust, but 
There you can see my blade is slightly out of square. I hand twisted each of these blades, so they're not perfect. But it seems to be good enough for good enough for the boats I make, you know. Good enough for now. I can replace it if it if it wears out. I guess just the point of the whole test is that it makes a much better propeller than an impeller. So I kind of ditched the 90 and I'm kind of focusing on a much simpler, more effective way to use what I have here. Although the jet is still in my mind and in my heart, I'm kind of moving on. Good helper. Can you believe this kid's looking at me to learn how to talk? And do everything? So, if they're not tightened too hard, the blade can spin pretty freely. There's no bearings in here, per se. It's just kind of metal on metal. And uh, it works pretty good. Now, how long it'll last, that remains to be seen. But I could change it every few trips for two or three bucks. Not a big deal. For prototype's sake. So after I ditched the, uh, the tunnel, I decided to try to use some of it to make a tunnel or housing for the propeller so it could be closer to the bottom of the boat kind of get some of the benefits of a jet but it's just becoming more and more obvious that that's a lot more work too and it's not really gonna pay off my other boats have a draft of like 18 inches and I never hit the ground with those and This we're talking about 6 inches or 8 inches and uh, I'm really not this is really not my problem. I'm not driving in rocks and stuff. It's not going to be fast enough to go up White Rotter River. So I think I'll just mount my electric motor to my shaft bearing setup and have it all kind of a perfect unit here. Just all solid. I can mess with gear ratios between the two. Probably join them with a vacuum cleaner belt or some kind of uh, electronics belt or something something that doesn't need too much pressure on the pulleys maybe teeth on it you could set it up with a solid shaft too but starting to take away space from the inside of my boat more than i'd like but it would be much more simple 18 volts <laughs> Woo! a little promising i'm not going to put my finger in that one Getting warmer.